A nice feature of Slide Rocket is its integration with Google Docs. And if our students use the version integrated with Jeff Koo's Google Drive or Docs, they will have upgraded features not available on the free version found at SlideRocket.com. So make sure to log into Jeff Koo Google Drive or Google Docs first. Then use the More button to access Slide Rocket. You will land on your Slide Rocket dashboard where you will see existing projects and can delete them by right clicking. To make a new project, use the New button. Name your project. Choose from one of the various themes available or you can create your own. After you have selected a theme, choose OK. This will take you to the Slide Rocket Editor. Along the left are items that can be added, pictures, text, video, and so on. Along the right are properties so I can adjust the layout or other properties of the slide here. Let me start with some text. Once I've selected my text, the properties along the right change, allowing me to change colors and other properties of the text. I can use the arrow to add animations as well. To add an animation, I click the plus button and choose my animation type. I can adjust the speed, start options, and preview my animation from this menu as well. Text effects can also be applied, allowing for additional customizations. Now let's add some pictures. When I choose the Add Picture button, I'm taken to a list of other pictures I've previously uploaded. I can use one of these pictures by clicking on it and choosing Add Media in the lower right. Or I can use the Import Media button to add additional images. I've collected several pictures in a folder to use for this project. And I can upload them all at one time. After my media has been uploaded, I again select it and then use the Add Media button. Just as with text, I can add effects and edit my images. I can crop my images, add effects, add animations, To add a new slide, I can visit the slide menu or simply click the plus new button in the lower left. Let me quickly add some pictures and text to these slides. Along the bottom, I can see the order of my slides and I can drag and drop to rearrange them. Now let's explore adding narration, music, and slide transitions. To add narration, visit the slide you wish to narrate and use the audio button that has a microphone icon. I can add existing mp3 audio files using the add audio button or I can record my narration as long as I have an internal or external mic connected to my computer. When you click the record button, you'll be prompted to allow Slide Rocket to access your flash player. Click allow and then start recording. Once recorded, you can preview your narration and clear it to re-record if necessary. It might not surprise you to learn that field days were probably started by farmers as a recreational community activity and competition. I can move to the next slide and repeat this process. After I add audio to a slide, you'll notice the advanced to next slide options change from on click to when audio or video is finished. I can change this back, but I do like the way it works, so I'm going to leave it. To make my digital story feel more like a traditional story, I will add a page turn transition between each slide. 
So that I don't have to do this slide by slide, I'll hold down the control button to select several slides at once. To invite others to edit this project with me, I simply visit the Share menu and choose Invite. I need to visit the Collaborate tab to enter the Jeffco Gmail addresses of those I wish to add as collaborators. I apply my changes and then to get back to my presentation, click the Edit button. Next, I want to add a YouTube video to this slide. I simply need to click the video button. I can upload my own video files or use the YouTube tab across the top to copy and paste in a URL. Use the add media button to finish the process. If I select my video and choose the video options button, I can decide if a video will start automatically, play or pause when clicked, or loop. I can also adjust the volume and ratio options here. Last, I can add background music to play in addition to my narration. Go to the file menu and choose presentation settings. Under soundtrack, click select and then navigate to or upload an mp3 file of your choice. It's best to keep the volume low if your slide rocket has narration and I loop the track so it plays throughout my presentation. Slide Rocket has been saving my working changes as I go, but I still need to finalize those adjustments by choosing File, Save a Version, when I exit, or I can choose to exit without saving any of the changes of my current editing session. To publish my project, I need to make sure it's public, and in this example, I'm going to embed my Slide Rocket in a Schoology discussion so others can view it and comment on it there. I could also embed it on a website. I'm going to visit the Share menu to choose Publish. I need to make sure my presentation is set to public so others can view it without being logged in as me. Once I do that, I can use the Get Embed Code button to get the code I need to copy into Schoology. I'll stick with the defaults here, copy the code, and switch over to my Schoology discussion. If I paste the embed code into the area where I usually write my comments, all I get is embed code. However, if I instead use the link option beneath the comment box and paste in my embed code here, choose Post, I'll see that the embedded media has been added. And when others click the blue play button, they will be able to view my project right here and can comment on it. It might not surprise you to learn that field days were probably started by farmers as a recreational community activity and competition. Web-based tools like Slide Rocket can be used for digital storytelling and a variety of other presentation projects. The web-based nature of Slide Rocket allows for students to easily work on multiple computers from multiple locations in addition to being able to share and embed their projects in a variety of locations.